Welcome in. I'm Kimberly. This is Pretty Over 50, where we talk everything makeup, skincare, and style for the over 50 woman. Today, we're just playing with makeup. As you might know, I was a pretty eager participant in the Ulta sale and the Sephora sale, and then the Ulta sale, and then the Sephora sale. I was very, very enthusiastic about picking up some new makeup products and ended up with a huge haul. If you didn't see my gigantic haul video, I'll go ahead and list it up here. It might be kind of fun for you to take a look at. Today, we're just playing with makeup. I'm going to be diving into some of the new products that I picked up and seeing how they work for us more mature over 50 women. If you're new here, I'm so glad you stopped by. I hope you'll consider subscribing while you're here and make sure you click that notification bell so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. We're going to jump right into the makeup today and as always all products that I use and mention today will be listed and linked below so super easy for you to find and with that let's hop into it. Primer today is the L'Oreal Age Perfect Blurring Face Primer. I think that this is probably my most consistent primer throughout 2021. It just does what it's supposed to do. You know, one thing I can say about primers, and I was thinking about that the other day, I don't know that I've met a primer yet that I would say is a game changer. I have found some that are good and that I like, but nothing so far that I would say, oh my gosh, this did something miraculous for my skin. So I'm just going to smooth that over the complexion. Today I'm going to be diving into the Milk. This is their Hydro Grip Eye Primer. This is fairly new on the market and my golly, so many people are loving it. Comes in a little tube just like this. I haven't used this yet. Let's see what they say about it. This is kind of funny. It says a 93% natural. How are you 93% natural? I don't understand it. A 93% natural invisible hydrating primer for eyeshadow and concealer so you can use it underneath your eyes that creates a smooth base and locks down color for up to eight hours to help prevent creasing, fading, and smudging. Let's see. Let me go ahead and bring you in here. <laughs> There'll be a whole lot of Kimberly on the screen. There, you can see more details that way. Oh, so it comes with a doe foot applicator. Well, that's interesting. All righty. Let's go ahead and give this a whirl. It feels very light going on. It almost doesn't feel like I've got product on my eyelids. I find that interesting. So I'm gonna go ahead and just tap that in. It's very hydrating, and they said hydrating. Feels a little bit like a slick skincare item. Not necessarily creamy, but more slick. And I'm gonna put just a little bit underneath my eyes. I am gonna use my corrector a little bit later, but We'll just add a little bit of this now. So it doesn't feel sticky at all. It feels very light. I can still feel a little bit of the hydrating factor right now. In other words, it feels a little cooling on my lids. I'm gonna do my brows really quick with my Revlon Colorstay Brow Creator. Still love this. I'm going to go ahead and start in with foundation first today, which I generally don't do. I generally do my eyes first, but I'm kind of excited about this product and wanted to jump right in. This is the Dior Backstage Face and Body Foundation. <laughs> you can see that's a pretty shiny box. I picked this up in the Sephora sale. It is a very, very popular foundation. Of course, I haven't tried it before. I picked the color 1N. We'll see how that works for me today. 1.6 fluid ounces in this container retails for $40. It looks like they have 37 shades in this particular line. What they say is the Dior Backstage Face and Body Foundation is the makeup artist's secret weapon to create an instantly flawless complexion and ultra buildable coverage from a natural nude glow to high coverage perfection. I'll probably try to go for a medium to full coverage today. I like a full coverage on my face, but I like it to look a little bit skin-like, a little bit fresh and dewy. So we'll see how this works out today. I'm gonna go ahead and shake it up. Oh, it has a little squeezy tube right here. So I'm gonna put some on the back of my hand and start dotting that over my face. Actually, that shade looks pretty good. This is my Ruffer Complexion Brush. I love the Ruffer brushes. <laughs> They're so fun to work with. And it is smoothing over the skin very easily. It feels extremely light. It almost feels like I have nothing on my complexion, which is nice. You can see how it's covering just with the first application right there. Pretty much did a good job of covering up my age spots. 
it feels good on the skin, if that makes any sense. In other words, it doesn't feel like I have a thick layer of something on my skin. It feels very light and almost a little refreshing. I know that sounds kind of silly, but that's how it feels. There's a lighter application. I'm going to go ahead and add just a little bit more in a few of the areas that I want a little bit more coverage. And we'll see how this builds up. All right, it's building up actually very nicely. It's almost a matte finish. There's just the slightest amount of glow to it. It's definitely not as glowy as my Dior Forever Skin Glow. <laughs> it's the name, Forever Skin Glow. It looks a little bit more matte than that, but not flat matte. So I'm going to go ahead and just press that in with my sponge. So it's been snowing here <laughs> all week this week. I really haven't gone out of the house much. Just pretty much been sitting by the fire enjoying the winter season. What I can say from looking in my 7X mirror here is that it really looks beautiful on the skin. It looks quite skin-like for having one and a half layers of this foundation on my face. It has covered up my little doodads quite well and it doesn't look heavy or cakey at all. It really is quite the beautiful finish. It doesn't have much of a glow, so if you like a glowy foundation, this probably isn't going to be a good fit for you. But if you like a very natural looking matte finish with just the tiniest amount of glow, this is really pretty. I'm gonna go ahead and correct my under eyes with my Beauty Pie Under Eye Genius. Still have a mad crush on this. And I just pat this underneath the eyes. It does a beautiful job of illuminating my under eye area and holding on to my concealer just incredibly well. So I'm having lunch with a girlfriend today. Couldn't resist the Red Holiday sweater. For concealer today, I'm using the Tarte Ultra Creamy. This is the Shape Tape Concealer. I'm in the color 12N. I believe that's right. <laughs> <laughs> this is one of my favorite concealers that I found all year long. I just love it. It has great coverage. It goes on really, really creamy and smooth, hence the name. For some reason, I just get such a kick out of using this. When it comes to concealers, it really is personal preference on what you enjoy. This particular concealer, I really love. Just going to blend that in with my BK Beauty 205 brush, and I'm going to get it right up in that little inside corner next to my eye to kind of counteract that shadowing that I get there. I'm gonna smooth that over the under eye area. And then the magic happens when I go back in with my sponge. This is my Sigma sponge. I actually tried the Beauty Blender in a couple of videos. I like it. I don't like it as much as my Sigma. <laughs> it just is not as handy to me. The Sigma sponge, once you wet it, gets really, really soft and bouncy like the Beauty Blender. But the Sigma has this really strong point right here, plus this flat bottom, so handy. This sponge retails for $20, which I think is the same price as the Beauty Blender. I've been using this, gosh, for almost a year now. Just love it, it still performs excellent. You can see how well that concealer blends in. I like that color, it's 12N, because it brightens up my under eye and makes things look a little more open in that area. Another new product, I'm trying the Fenty Beauty. This is the Matchstick Bronzer in the color Mocha. It's a cream bronzer that you just twist up. Haven't used this at all. Let's go ahead and see what this color looks like. Obviously, it's a little bit pigmented. I'm gonna go in with a fairly light hand because I'm pretty fair. So just with a little bit around the face. This is a cream formula, and it doesn't really feel like I'm gonna need to worry about it drying down before I get to it to blend it out. And a little under my chin. And under my chin, see that little gel right there? <laughs> I always like to bring that up a little bit to kind of push that jowl back and make it look a little less noticeable. Feels very creamy going on, no dragging or pulling on the skin at all. Take my little stipple brush and start blending that in. Oh wow, that's pretty. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? That's a great color for my complexion. Blend that in nicely. Blending in really well, very pretty color. Isn't that gorgeous? <laughs> I'm kind of surprised and shocked. Here's what is surprising me about this. It looks so pretty on the skin and it blended in so beautifully. It has a very, very natural glow. Oh my gosh, so impressed with this so far.
Blend that in underneath my chin and down my neck. And you can see how bringing that up on the jowls a little bit <laughs> sort of makes them a little less noticeable. I'll tell you what, I am such a fan of this bronzer. That is so pretty. Just a beautiful glow on the complexion. Looks very natural, blended in beautifully. Did move my foundation around. Oh my gosh, it just is so pretty. Mm. I'm going to go ahead and hop into eyeshadow now and do my blush and highlight when my eyes are done. Today I'm going to be using this tiny little Biba mini palette from Natasha Denona. I'm not sure where I got this. It must have been in a gift set from Sephora. I'm not sure that I've seen this on the Sephora website or the Natasha Denona website. I'll have to look for it to see if I can link it. It's just a tiny little palette and I want to go for a fairly simple eye look today because of course I have to put on red lipstick to match my sweater. So I want my lips to be the focus of today and my eyes to just be a light shadow look. And I thought this would be perfect today. And of course these are reminiscent of the Biba palette. So we have a sparkly lid shade, just a beautiful champagne gold tone, a nice crease shade, transition shade right there, and then a beautiful smoke shade. What I'm loving about this color combination is they're very neutral, not too warm, not too cool, just beautiful for almost any skin tone. And of course, when I swatched them on the back of my hand, they felt glorious. I love the Natasha Denona eyeshadow formula. This is my BK Beauty 202 brush, and I'm just gonna dip it into the transition shade right here, get a little bit on my brush and tap it off. And that's gonna go in the area right above my natural crease. And I'm probably going to bring that down onto the lid as well. But a very, very light application. I want to keep the eyes fairly light today. Of course, these shadows are going on beautifully and they just blend out so well. And I'm really going to address that edge at the very top, right underneath my brow. I want to make sure that transition area is just blended really well. Now I'm going to take a flat brush and dip it into this darker brown shade right here. And I'm just getting product on the very, very tip of those bristles, knocking it off, and I'm gonna place that right at the outside edge of my movable lid, up into the crease a little bit, and then down along the lash line. This is going to kind of create an eyeliner look along the outside third of my movable lid and give some definition to that outside area of the eye. And the line that I'm creating on the outside corner really lines up with the edge of my eye and the end of my brow. I don't want to bring it out because that's going to drag my eye down. I want to make sure that I keep it right in that line right there. And that's going to provide a lift to my eyes. Now I'm going to take a big fluffy brush. This is the 201 from BK Beauty and I'm just going to blend that in. I don't want to move that color. I want to keep it in the same area. I just want the edges to be very, very soft. Now I'm just dipping my finger into that shimmer shade and that's going to go all over the movable lid. Oh my gosh, I absolutely love that formula. Here's what I like so much about the Natasha Denona formula for older, more mature eyes. Because my eyelids are crinkly and wrinkly, if I get sparkles up there, like significant sparkles, it's not a good look. This particular shade is just so beautiful. It has that nice glow to it without the sparkles. Just love it. Just patting that with my finger over the lid almost all the way to the end of the eye. I want to make sure that that outside corner stays dark. So I'm moving it about three quarters of the way over that movable lid. Now I'm going to take a tiny little detail brush and dip it into that champagne shade and that's going to go right on the inside corner. The reason I'm doing this with a brush is because I can get more detail in that area. Because it's a little wrinkly and crinkly in there, it's harder to get that detail work done with my finger. Now I'm going to go back in with that fluffy brush and I'm just going to blend that transition from the movable lid up into the crease and so that it's very, very smooth. Super simple eye look today, but I think it's so very pretty. I have a new Milani Cheek Kiss blush today. This is the color Blushing Berry. <laughs> I just thought that was so pretty. When I think about all the blushes that I've tried in 2021, the Milani line of blushes just really is a standout for me. 
their baked blushes and their cheek kiss blushes. Of course, the baked blushes are a powder formula. These are a cream formula. I like them both. There's something about the way these feel. They're very, very juicy and hydrating feeling. So here's the color right here. That's pretty strong. So I'm going to go very, very gently with this blush and just to the upstairs area of my cheeks. Just going to blend that in. Gosh, that's a pretty color, isn't it? Now I'm just going to take my sponge and press that in and really focus around the edges of that blush so that it blends in nicely into my foundation. That color is so very pretty. I knew it was going to be good, but I didn't know it was going to be this good. Oh, that's so nice. Mmm, isn't that gorgeous? The highlight I'm going to use today is from Makeup by Mario. This is in the color Pearl. I have used this a few times and I am such a fan. And here is why I love it so much. It's not so much that the color is that unique out in the world of highlights. We have just about every color of highlight available from drugstore on up to high end. What I love about this particular highlight is when you put it on, it melts into the skin. And that's one thing that I don't know that I can necessarily say about my favorite drugstore highlighters. They may look very, very beautiful on the skin, but as far as that melting in and absolutely looking like there's nothing on the skin but just this glowy finish, I can't say that very many of my drugstore highlighters do that, if any at all. The finish this gives on the skin is just almost magical. So I'm gonna get a little bit on my thin brush here and hit that at the tops of my cheeks and onto the front. Look at that glow, it just melts in. So very pretty. I'm going to take what's left on my brush and just a little bit underneath the brows. I'm going to take a big fluffy brush and blend that in. Now I'm going to finish off my complexion with a very light application of the Milani Prep Set and Glow and just pounce that over my face. Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Setting Spray. I've done my liner and lashes. Today I used my beloved L'Oreal Lay Liner. This is in the color Noir Cashmere. This is the liner that I reach for all the time. It comes in several colors. I have, I think, there's a navy color, a brown color. It's called Brown Denim. This one is the closest to black, but it's not a black black. It's kind of a deep gray black. It's so very pretty. For mascara today, I use the Clinique High Impact Mascara. I've really been testing and trying this with the Seals Booster. This is a lash primer from Lancome. The combination this creates is what you can see in my lashes right now. Very, very lengthened a little bit volumized, but still very fluttery and natural looking. I think this combination is a great way to get very sophisticated, very long lashes and still have them look more feathery and light. For lipstick today, we're going bright red to match the sweater in the holiday season. I'm using the Rimmel Lip Liner in Red Dynamite and the Huda Beauty in Cinco de Mayo. And here we have the lipstick. Here we have the finished look. Oh my gosh, you guys. That was such a fun makeup day. The Dior Backstage Foundation, so beautiful. Really, really a lovely foundation. You can create either a light coverage, medium coverage, or a heavy coverage with this foundation. It looks beautiful on the skin. It went on seamlessly, no polka dot pores, no streaking, no clumping, everything was just lovely with this. I used a medium to full coverage application. I think it did a lovely job covering up all the doodads on my skin and my skin still looks lovely and skin-like. Really loving this Dior Backstage Foundation. The Fenty Beauty Bronzer, oh my gosh, I was so surprised at this. I love this. The packaging is wonderful. It's so handy and substantial. You just twist it up to get more product here. I think the look on the skin is lovely. It went on creamy, it was easy to blend in. It looked so natural and beautiful on my skin. Really a fan of the Fenty Beauty Matchstick Bronzer. I'm in the color Mocha. The Milani Cheek Kiss Blush in Blushing Berry. Super fan of this color. I think it put a beautiful glow on the skin. These are so pigmented, they blend in so well, they stay really well. Just a great line of drugstore blushes. If you haven't tried these and you're looking for a blush, 
I can highly recommend this line. The tiny little Natasha Denona Viva mini palette, I guess you would call this really a fan. These formulas I feel are so good for mature skin. My eyelids are crinkly and wrinkly and I like to be able to blend my shadows out and have them look very, very pretty on my eyelids. This formula really, really works. The two matte colors blended in really well, gave me a nice definition in the outside corner of my eye, and boy, this shimmer shade looks so pretty. No little pesky sparkles, just a beautiful glow on the lids. Big fan of the tiny little Viva palette from Natasha Denona. The other things that we use today that are not necessarily new, but I'm loving this Makeup by Mario highlighter in the color Pearl. This formula just blends into the skin so beautifully. It looks like nothing on your skin other than a gorgeous glow. I've enjoyed this every time I've used it. The Tarte Shape Tape Creamy Concealer. <laughs> Still just one of my favorite concealers of 2021. This eye combination of the Clinique High Impact Mascara with the Lancome Seals Primer. Beautiful long lashes, still very fluttery and feathery. A lovely look. The Huda Beauty Lipstick in Cinco de Mayo. I mean, <laughs> are we talking Christmas red or what? I had a great time putting together this makeup look today. I hope you enjoyed it too. If you did, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you're new here, make sure you smash that subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. You guys know it just makes my day when you take a few minutes out of your day to spend it with me. I appreciate that and I appreciate you. Again, I'm Kimberly. This is Pretty Over 50, where we talk everything makeup, skincare, and style for the over 50 woman. Make it a great day, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye now.